I'm Ed Chung. Uh, again, I have been years, and I'm also an internal medicine physician, and I'm creating a series of eight videos talking about Meniere's disease. This is video four, in which I'm going to talk about the diagnosis of Meniere's disease. Again, you can look at all this up in on the web, I'm sure, and Google everything. However, um, I'm trying to give a little more insight into Meniere's disease, um, given that I have this, and um, I'm also a physician. So, on my previous video, I talked about the symptoms of Meniere's disease. This one, I'm, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the diagnosis of Meniere's disease and how um, Western physicians sort of diagnose this. The big thing to remember is that the underlying cause of Meniere's disease has not been discovered. And again, as I said in my previous video, that Meniere's, it's called Meniere's disease, but it actually could also be called Meniere's syndrome in that it's, it's actually diagnosed by a constellation of symptoms. Um, before I go into actually how, we how, how physicians actually diagnose Meniere's disease, I do want to highly, highly, highly recommend that if you can, go, in, go onto the web or go into a, your local library and try to find this book. It's called Meniere's Disease, What You Need to Know by P.J. Haybach. She's an RN. Uh, and it's written by the Vestibular Disorders Association. It's an excellent, excellent book um, talking about Meniere's disease, the symptoms, um, all the tests, and what to expect. And um, But unfortunately, this book is out of print. It was written in 1998. You can, I put a link on this for, to the Amazon website, but the book's very expensive. Just the used copies themselves are around 40 to $50. Um, but try to look in your local library to find that. The, the second thing I'm, I also highly, highly recommend, again, with the diagnosis or with the symptoms, is to uh, find this app called uh, You Here. It's hard, very, very hard to see. It's this blue app in the top right corner here. It's, it's called You Here. And take a look at it. It's free. Uh, get some high-quality headphones and test your hearing. So, again, um, this video for is talking about the diagnosis of Meniere's disease. Uh, again, underlying cause of Meniere's syndrome has not been discovered. The true diagnosis, how, how physicians basically diagnose Meniere's disease, is by exclusion. Now, the difference between uh, um, traditional way of diagnosing disease is you look for a pathology, meaning that you maybe cut open someone's heart, you do an angiogram, and you find blockage in the person's heart, and you say that they have heart disease. Well, with Meniere's disease, you're not going to cut open someone's ear and look for swelling in the ear. Um, and there's really no good true study or test to truly diagnose Meniere's disease. So it is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that you've ruled out, you've made sure that the person doesn't have any other pathological causes for the symptoms that they have. Um, so almost all good uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors or head and neck doctors that you see to make this diagnosis, and this, this diagnosis really should not be made from, uh, I mean, it can be made from a family practitioner or an internal medicine physician, but really the person, the subspecialist that you really need to see to truly make this diagnosis should be uh, an experienced ear, nose, and throat doctor, okay? Um, and the way they make the diagnosis is, number one, from the constellation of symptoms, again, go back to my video three, and those are all the symptoms, Again, I divide it into three things. Number one, the hearing problems, which are deafness and ringing in the ears, tinnitus, along with number two, the vestibular problems, uh, which are nausea and vertigo. Um, and then the third thing are just the generalized symptoms from the irritation of the, of the eighth nerve, which is the fullness of the ear, fatigue, and a fugue, I call it, which is sort of confusion, just forgetfulness, just not feeling, the, the sense of not feeling well. Um, so with those symptoms, the variability of the symptoms, um, one person may not have all of them, may just have a few of them, but the combination of those symptoms together really is how um, we really diagnose Meniere's disease. The second way also, um, as I said before, is of diagnosing Meniere's disease is, is by a, a ruling out other causes. So, so suggest, suggestive results of other tests, um, such as a, a hearing study showing low frequency hearing loss, along with a MRI scan of the brain that is normal, and 
blood tests that are all normal. So in combination of all these symptoms, plus low frequency hearing loss, a normal MRI, and normal blood tests, um, all these things together sort of diagnose Meniere's syndrome or Meniere's disease. So the, the tests that I absolutely recommend that, that, that you have and you should have, um, which your primary physician can order, not just the ear, and, ear, nose, and throat doctor, but the blood tests you absolutely should have are a CBC, which is a complete blood cell count, electrolytes, which is your sodium, potassium, chloride, and bicarbonate levels, a BUN, which is your kidney function test, and a creatinine level, along with the glucose, a full lipid panel to look for elevated cholesterol. Sometimes high cholesterol can deposit in the ears and cause tinnitus and problems. Uh, full liver function tests, a calcium level, magnesium level, and phosphorus level, along with a TSH, which is thyroid stimulate hormone, and a thyroid function test, an ESR, which is a SED rate, which is looking for autoimmune inflammation, an RPR, looking for syphilis, because uh, latent uh, second or third degree syphilis can cause this rarely, or these symptoms rarely. And the last thing is an HIV test. Okay, um, I, I put all these on, on on the description of my video here. You can go look them up. But have your primary physician order all these t studies for you, and they all should be normal in the Meniere's disease. Um, other tests that are absolutely, I definitely, definitely, absolutely recommend that maybe your spe subspecialist ear, nose, and throat doctor may order. Um, which uh, should be done for the diagnosis is an audiogram testing your hearing and an MRI scan of the brain. Okay, again, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. The MRI scan of the brain is needed to make sure you don't have other strange causes or reasons, a fracture of your, of your temporal mandibular area, uh, acoustic neuroma can actually cause all of these symptoms, which is a little growth that grow is on the eighth nerve. Um, another tumor or other ble bleeding in, into the, the brain area. So an MRI scan of the brain is, is necessary. The, one thing to mention is an MRI is necessary. A CT scan can be done, but it really is not as recommended because it does not give us quite a, of good detail as the MRI scan of the brain looking at the eighth nerve. So other possible tests that your ear, nose, and throat doctor may, may order or otolaryngalis may order is a temporal bone scan looking at the bone tissue, bone area of the area right near your eighth nerve. Uh, an ECOG study, which is sort of a glorified hearing study, uh, along with an ENG, which is a electro nystagmogram, uh, a rotary chair test, a CDP, which is a computerized dynamic posturography test, and allergy testings. Okay. Um, so again, this is sort of how the ear, nose, and throat doctors make your diagnosis. Um, again, if you can, get the book. Very, 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 very good. And the last piece of advice I absolutely recommend is that make sure you keep two copies of all your blood tests, all your uh, uh, studies that you get done, and keep the originals, if you can, in your own file. Make copies. If you see another physician or see get other opinions or see other specialists, Bring photocopies of all your studies um, and you can give it to them, but make sure you keep two copies for yourself of all your studies. Okay, um, good luck and on to video five, which I'm going to talk about other things that can, may help with the symptoms of Meniere's disease.